Grace and peace to you from God our Creator and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. So what are we to make of this gospel passage from Mark chapter 1? About a month ago we heard part of the story before concerning John the Baptist, a wild man of sorts who preached a message of repentance that said, forget the way that you are living now and return to the way of the Lord, doing all of this while eating, well, bugs dipped in honey. He also baptized people as a symbolic ritual of that repentance. Then Jesus came along on the shores of the River Jordan to take part in his own baptismal ritual. And by this action, Jesus being baptized signified not only the importance of baptism, as well as furthering God's connection with us, for he has been there before, as we have been celebrating for, well, a month or so, being born in a manger, but more than that, all things that encompasses what it means to be human, saying God understands you in your joy and in your pain. But this baptism that Jesus did boldly proclaim that our preparation for his coming is completed, and it is time now to start following Jesus, the way of Jesus. And the way of Jesus calls us to listen to his words, to be transformed by his miracles, and find new life on a cross and a resurrection three days later. Start following Jesus, then God ordains it, all by speaking, well, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. Sounds pretty amazing. Yea, Jesus has been baptized. Woohoo! And Jesus has done all of this thing, all of these things supposedly for our sake. John the Baptist is a lovely camel hair guy with an, an awesome message. Yet what does it all mean for someone like me or you? We really didn't have all that pomp and circumstance that Jesus had especially with doves floating above our heads. Now most of us have been baptized in this worship space, yet have you figured out how it connects with your day-to-day -day living? Baptism, every day. Well, if not, if you've not figured it out, allow me to guide your understanding. First, baptism is more than just water that is sprinkled, dunked, splashed, gushed upon your head. It is a ritual that connects us with God's word that proclaims and claims and names you as one of God's chosen ones. A blessed someone who is worth dying for and who is worthy to be loved, not only but by God who created you, but also by the body of Christ who will guide you and support and walk with you in your faith as well. You are God's son. You are God's daughter, the beloved, with whom God is so pleased with. In other words, God loves you. The body of Christ loves you. And we never hear these words quite enough especially in a world that we live in that is filled with brokenness and pain and suffering, just to name a few words that describe this globe that we are so graciously a part of. But in baptism, we truly hear these love words for the very first time, and then we are marked with this love symbol upon our foreheads. However, Many of us, when the water has been dried up and we go on with our daily life, we figure out, well, hey, my baptism was fun. Mark it off the to-do list. Or some of us stop right there and ask, what more could there be for me? I'm loved, and so I'll stay here treating the baptismal water like a jacuzzi, sitting right there on the lip and going, ah. Not moving at all. But I want you to know this. Jesus, after he is baptized, does not swim in the Jordan 
after he gets this dove above his head and God says you know, that you know, God is very well pleased with him. And instead, Mark chapter 1, verse 12 says, And the Holy Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. And you could probably even see where he went with those wet footprints from the River Jordan. For 40 days he was tempted, but focused on God. And then his ministry began where John the Baptist left off. He called his first disciples, Simon Peter, Andrew, James, and John. And then he did miracles and taught and told people all about God, called others to follow him. Nowhere in scripture does it say that Jesus took a break when it came to God. He got out of the water and moved. Which begs the question, why don't we do the same? Now remember, we are connected to God through Jesus by his words of love with this holy water that flows over our brow. Yet that is just the beginning of so much more to come when it comes to our baptism. For you see, baptism is not just a moment. Baptism is a lifestyle that it desires for us to get out of the water and start moving in with and for God, calling others to experience, to see, and to taste God's love for themselves. Yet, even though your baptism calls you to get a move on uh, with our watery feet, how many of us are still in the baptismal jacuzzi? not knowing what to do, or hesitant to even move forward. So ask yourself this. Do you want everyone and anyone to see what you see? Do you want them to know what you know, especially when it comes to your loved ones, let alone the stranger who needs Jesus just as much as well, everyone else does? God is not a secret that we need to be hiding. We are called to speak of God's love. Do not hesitate. And I understand that many of you don't know what to do or say what to say. Let me give you some of the things that I say often about what you can do. Number one, start with praying. Pray for your neighbor. Pray with your neighbor. Show acts of compassion and grace. Use the gifts God has blessed you with to state your baptismal faith. Speak of God and what God has done for you, often as you are able. Read scripture. Show a dedication to a worship life. Yep, show up on Sundays. But through it all, welcoming people to hear how they are beloved and they are a pleasing creature, child of God. So in short, your baptism for your daily living is a constant responding to God's love for you. So get out and start moving. Let me tell you a final story that happened this morning. Safeway, today we're having our church luncheon. <laughs> Thought I needed to pick up a little something. I was in the deli section. <coughs> now, folks, I do not proclaim to people on my chest where it says, Hark! I am a seminary trained pastor. <laughs> no. I had my coat zipped up. You couldn't see the clerical. You couldn't see a cross that I always wear. There is no identifying mark on me that says that I am a pastor. So here I am grabbing my potato salad. Please eat it today. So <laughs> I grab my potato salad, and here is this woman, a little younger than I am, with her two kids. She is in tears. Right next to me, kind of doing this whimpering kind of tear. My response, and I'm not trying to be a superhero, folks, is, are you okay? <coughs> I'm fine. 
okay, well, can I at least pray for you or something? I'm not into that Jesus thing. <clears throat> okay. Well, I hope your day is better. Grabbed my potato salad, went over to the fruits and vegetable aisle to grab my lunch to supplement what we're having at our luncheon. <laughs> I am in the line to pay for my goods. The woman uh, rolls up right behind me and says, do you remember you had asked me if I would like some prayer? Yes. <laughs> do you mind if we do that now? And the cashier stopped what she was doing and joined us by clasping her hands and bowed her head. Here, these two small children did the same. And these, this woman who had never met an eye, we prayed in the aisle two. <laughs> Just so that God may be in some kind of peace to her. It's not that hard, folks. God loves you. And we are bearers of that love through our words, our thoughts, and deeds. <coughs> Get out of the water and start moving. Amen. Amen.